Another day, another scheme to avoid no deal. Although Parliament may not be sitting right now, there is, in a sense, a virtual Parliament in session. Thousands of texts and WhatsApp messages pinging backwards and forwards. Although many MPs can agree what they want in the short term, they want to stop Britain leaving the EU without a deal on the 31st of October, what they can't agree is the big question that follows that. Naomi Smith is a self-declared Romaniac and none too pleased with how MPs are behaving. A no deal is about what is going to happen to our economy for at least the next decade. It's about the future of the entire union of the country. It's about medicine shortages. It's about food shortages. It's about peace in Northern Ireland. So it's incredibly frustrating that three and a half years on from the referendum, politicians still haven't been able to reach any kind of resolution over this. <laughs> Assuming the government is defeated in a no-confidence vote when Parliament returns, and that is not a certainty, who should try to form a government? Well, the obvious person would seem to be the opposition leader, Jeremy Corbyn. But the Lib Dems have said he's not the right person, and they're floating other names, such as the Conservative MP Ken Clark or the former Labour deputy leader, Harriet Harman. We are happy to talk to um, Jeremy Corbyn, to work with the Labour Party, but we think if... If this is going to work, if we're going to have a government of national unity, it has to be someone who can command enough support. Jeremy Corbyn can't do that, but what I'd like to ask him is will he support someone who can? However, Mr Corbyn is, for rather obvious reasons, reluctant to step aside. I'm the leader of the opposition, I'm the leader of the Labour Party. Under the normal constitutional processes in Britain, when a government collapses, the leader of the main opposition party is called upon to form a government, and we are ready to do that. Order. But is there another route? Could MPs use Parliament to prevent no deal without changing government by seizing control of the parliamentary agenda, as they've done before? I'm absolutely clear that this is not an insurgency at all. It is an adjustment of the standing orders for today. This is the first choice strategy of one of those names being floated to lead an alternative government. The first thing to try is to get the majority in Parliament, which is against Boris's policy of leaving with no deal, to actually come together, pass legislation, if we can, that binds the government uh, to seek a more sensible outcome in whatever way the majority agrees on. And if it's necessary to get rid of the government to do that, and form a government of national unity, then, of course, you can argue about who leads it, who's in it. The most important thing is, can the majority go in for a political compromise, pragmatism, so they're all actually agreed on a cross-party basis what this government of national unity is going to do? They've been very creative over the last parliament, certainly, with how they have uh, used um, legislation to try and block things. They can do that again. It's not going to be easy. Of course it isn't. Uh, and it's just right now that they are getting together instead of having summer holidays and beginning to have this dialogue because the whole future of the country rests on their ability to do this. All the while, though, the clock ticks towards the 31st of October. The forces against no deal can't agree a deal between themselves. Well, joining us now from Edinburgh is the former Liberal Democrat leader, Sir Ming Campbell. Welcome. Uh, jo Swinson was putting party ahead of country, wasn't she, this week? No, what she was doing was recognising the fact that these are not normal circumstances. I thought it was notable that Jeremy Corbyn himself said, normally this is what happens, the leader of the opposition is asked to form a government. But these are clearly not normal circumstances. And what she was saying in essence, because we're talking about a government of national unity, which political figure is best able to create the necessary unity in order to carry through the efforts to ensure that we do not crash but, out of but, the European Union on the 31st of October? But he's the leader of the opposition. He gets first dibs. I mean, that's the way it works, isn't it? Well, in normal circumstances, he would. But these are not normal circumstances. And of course, as was pointed out, I think by yourself, a moment or two, it's by no means a done deal, this. And that's why putting together uh, a group, uh, a movement, if you like, of people who are willing to be united behind a respected, independent, experienced figure, like Harriet Harman, for example, uh, or Kenneth Clark himself. That's what you've got to do in order to ensure that you get the motion of no confidence through the House of Commons. And if, as we all expect, 
these matters are going to be the subject of very considerable effort by the existing government to try and thwart them. The more united, the more cohesive we are, we, the more likely we are to succeed. We could pluck names of distinguished parliamentarians out of a hat, but the fact is that unless the Labour Party whips their MPs mm. behind this, it's not going to work, is it? So well, it, it's got to be the Labour Party's shout. Well, in normal circumstances, yes. Uh, but even where at the Labour Party show, you're quite right to say there are some Labour MPs who may, who may find it very difficult to support an effort of the kind that we are discussing. But that's a given. But the chances of putting together a sufficiently representative government and a government which carries at its head someone who has a capacity for unification will only be improved if it's someone like Harriet Harman or Kenneth Clark, or even Yvette Cooper, who, of course, uh, Kenneth Clark mentioned himself in but, your introduction. Given the very tight deadlines there are going to be when Parliament reassembles, isn't the simple fact that it really has to be a case of does Jeremy Corbyn move a no-confidence vote, and are you going to say that keeping him out of Downing Street is more important than stopping a no-deal Brexit? No, I don't say keeping him out of Downing Street is the right... I think you're looking well, at this through the wrong end of the telescope. Well, get in behind the him, question, then. Well, the question is, how can we assure, best assure the success of a motion of no confidence? He's got to move it, that's quite true. He'll have to make the speech of his life when he does move it, that's also true. But the question is, in the 14 days that follow, whom can we get to lead the government who is best likely to be able to assemble a majority which allows the monarch to say, I'm going to entrust you with the responsibility of governing the country. And realistically, do you think it is someone like Harry and Harriet Harman or Yvette Cooper being from the Labour side of the House that is more likely to garner the support of that critical mass of Labour MPs? They are well, still the big guns in this, aren't they? Yes, of course they are. And I think you're right. And I think also, if I may say so, there's never been uh, a Labour female uh, Prime Minister and it would be an opportunity for someone like Harriet Harman, who has, of course, a long and distinguished record in the House of Commons, to be given that responsibility. She's well capable of discharging it. Do you have any soundings that lead you to think that Harriet Harman or Yvette Cooper would be more able to garner that critical mass? Well, I mean, well, is it just on the basis of opinion that you think they're more acceptable? Uh, well, I'm not privy to the kind of intimate discussions that uh, Joe Swinson may be having. But what I'm quite certain about is that both of these are highly regarded. They're outstanding parliamentarians in their own right. They've been cabinet ministers, and indeed Ken Clark fulfills all of these criteria himself. That's exactly the kind of person who is much respected, who has the best chance of putting together if you like, a majority to ensure that we have a government which, on the assumption that the uh, no-confidence motion is granted, is that it succeeds, a government that is able to take the steps necessary to stop us from crashing out on the 31st of October. That Ian seems Campbell. to me to be the best bet at the moment. Ian Campbell, thank you so much. So is the Remainer opposition destined to implode if it can't bring together a critical mass of MPs behind it. Tom Newton-Dunn is the political editor of The Sun and Sonia Soda from The Observer also joins us now. Sonia, do you think, given everything we've already heard and, and you've picked up from your contacts, there is a viable pathway still for Jeremy Corbyn to stop this? I think there could no be. Brexit, I yeah, I, think, I don't think it's looking extremely likely at the moment, and indeed people are exploring other possibilities for ways that Parliament could block a no-deal Brexit. But I think there is still a chance. I think we've, we've seen Jo Swinson row back slightly in recent days, what she said when Jeremy Corbyn first made his offer. But I think you know, an MP, like a leader of the Liberal Democrats like Jo Swinson, needs to look at this and ask, how committed are the Liberal Democrats to stopping a no-deal Brexit? Because in terms of parliamentary procedure, one of the only fail-safe ways to do that is through a vote of no confidence and forming some sort of short-term emergency government, I think. And um, I think, you know, the fact that she said 
first of all, no, we're not even going to sort of talk about this with Jeremy Corbyn, does raise questions. How serious are the Lib Dems about this? Although Jo Swinson also today seemed to put some blame on Change UK, didn't she, uh, on Twitter, sort of suggesting, well, look, if we can't get them on board, I mean, is this still a blame game in crude terms, Tom, of, of each trying to sort of displace the blame for an no-deal Yeah, uh, to a certain extent, I think it is. Certainly a lot of Labour people think Jeremy Corbyn's not really that serious about this. He, he would be rather keen for Brexit to actually go ahead. It is still standing uh, uh, Labour Party manifesto policy for it still to happen. Uh, and there's a lot of jockeying for position trying to get the, the moral high ground. Interesting. I think actually Joe Swinson's going to win this sort of great big, you know, tussle with Jeremy Corbyn because the fact of the matter, she's got the numbers on her side. So what happens? This goes to a confidence vote. Uh, Boris Johnson may well lose that. They now have 14 days to, to pick someone who might be able to replace him. So it's still a massive might because these are still ferrets in the sack. First thing that happens, Corbyn says, well, it should be me. He will undoubtedly lose that vote. So he will then be under enormous pressure then, knowing it can't be him, to appoint someone else. Ken Clark, Carrot Holland, whoever it might be. How many Labour MPs are there, do you think, who couldn't bring themselves to support Jeremy Corbyn in this in this kind of role as the caretaker prime minister leading the country into an election? Well, I think there will be quite a few who in their hearts will feel sort of very reluctant to do so. But at the end of the day, it's very difficult if you've got Jeremy Corbyn pulling himself forward. For a, if a Labour MP doesn't support him leading a short-term emergency government on the terms that he set out in his letter, I mean, I think voters have got the right to ask, what, what on earth are they doing in the Labour Party? I don't think he won't need any lack of Labour MPs to, to not do it. They're interesting. There are 15 different independent MPs uh, in Parliament at the moment. So, and they're all added up on the opposition side. Fragmentation of the Parliament. Well, most of them used to be Labour MPs, you know, Change UK sorts or uh, angry uh, pro-Brexiteers. And none of them almost certainly will vote for Jeremy Corbyn for very good reason. Uh, so far, we've, we've just given attention to this, uh, the, the mechanics, I suppose, of a no-confidence vote. And then can Jeremy Corbyn get the votes or A and other? Mm. But is there another path? Is, is there the sort of procedural grieve Burkow or let's find a way to, to do this without a no confidence vote? Yeah, there is. A, there's the legislative path, which is simply commandeering the order paper. Uh, the government tables legislation and passes it. There is a way, and it's happened before earlier only this year, uh, to, to table your own bill if you've got enough MPs by and a complicit Speaker of the House of Commons, and uh, John Burkow certainly is one. It's fraught with risk, though, because that then if you're Parliament against the government, trying to take a bill through both houses on a very limited time frame, we've got, what, four or five weeks of sitting Commons time with a conference recess in the way they might legislate to, to do away with that. But it's, it is fraught with immense risk. So, and I'm talking to someone tonight, there appears to be this sort of veritable tooling up of Erskine May. So both sides are frantically flicking through this old-fashioned, this manual written 100, 200 years ago on, on how parliamentary business should be done to try and find arcane little tricks to... Uh, out counter each other. It's going to be a truly, almost imperceptibly hard game to follow for the likes of us, but a fascinating one all the same. The sudden death, though, I mean, the, the time is so limited. That's the problem. It is, it is. And I do think that if you, you know, there are other routes that are being explored, uh, but as Tom says, they are fraught with risk. To me, the clearest route does seem to be a vote of no confidence, an emergency short term government. And I do think that, um, you know, we, we heard Ming Campbell saying, well, Jeremy Corbyn just can't unite people from different parties around this. I think, though, if you're an MP who says that you will do what it takes to stop no deal, you've got to ask why not support Jeremy Corbyn? I mean, it's not you're not voting in a five year Jeremy Corbyn government. He's made very clear the only purpose of his short term government would be to, to, to avoid an ideal Brexit and to trigger well, a general election. The answer to that question for some MPs appears to be they can't bear the thought of him going into that general election as Prime Minister. Is that, even if it's just a three-month term, is that a significant factor in this, do you think, Tom? Uh, I think in part, I mean, certainly the Lib Dems say you can't trust Jeremy Corbyn. He's a, he's a terrible Brexiteer anyway, and he'll just betray everybody. But the reality is it's Tories. You really do need Tories to get this thing to work. So, you know, say you have 10 to 15 people counted in the opposition pile at the moment, voting potentially with Boris Johnson and the government because they're, they're very pro-Brexit. You know, some Labour MPs who might even do that. You need 15, 20 Tory MPs to vote against him. And, and last word... Well, are those numbers there? Do that you, you might have two right. Tory MPs voting right for a Jeremy Corbyn Prime Minister, no chance of 20. Uh, Tom and Sonia, thank you both very much.